thank God for another day in his presence as we learn things from the word of God. In the last episode, I've been talking about giving God the glory. And the core of my message is because we don't know him, we don't give him the glory. So I, I showed you two ways by which you can give God the glory. One way was to give God the glory by encouraging yourself. And the other way is to give God the glory by talking about his ability to others. And that is what we looked at in the last episode. As we continue today, let me tell you that the world is confronted with a situation. The world is confused and is battling a virus that has no solution till now. The world is struggling to unravel the mystery behind the coronavirus. And what is interesting is that because people don't know God, demons have taken over their minds and don't give God the glory. As I was building up my message till now, you can agree with me that giving God the glory is that acknowledging the power of his creation. Giving him the, the glory that is due to his name that he alone created this world. If he alone created this world, including the virus that has baffled you, then as I said in some of the episodes, then he alone has power to stop the pandemic. It is very sad that demons have taken over the minds of people and the glory of God is completely missing. When you look at television and you listen to the news, no one is giving God the glory. His glory is not seen at all. What I mean by that is that no one is speaking that God is able to stop this pandemic. It means that his glory is completely gone. And what is shocking is that those who profess to know him are not even giving him the glory. They may go to church and have prayed the Lord's prayer, but as I said in the other episodes, they don't understand the prayer they were praying. They were just saying, they thought it was just some words, but the Lord was showing us that the glory is the Lord's. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. So if you say the glory is the Lord's, then in this time of the coronavirus, as I showed you in the last episode, whatever situation you may be going through right now, you cannot put the glory of God away because he is the only one who can solve the mystery behind this. And as I told you, he allowed it. If he allowed it, he has the power to stop it. What is sad is that if you profess to know him and don't give him the glory, it means you don't know him. If you profess to know God and say you are a Christian, but in this time of the coronavirus, you don't give him the glory, you don't speak as if he has the power to solve it, then you don't know him. And that attracts his anger because you have taken away his glory. That was exactly what happened in the scripture that I want us to look at today. Let's turn our Bibles to Numbers chapter 20, verse 12. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe me, to hallow me 
in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Amen. Why the Lord spoke like this to Moses? Don't forget that God saw Moses as the most humble. God saw Moses as his true servant. That was why he went for him. Now when he was leading Israel into the promised land, something interesting happened. Israel were longing for water to drink. And God said, he and Aaron should speak to the rock and water will come out. God had done that before. In the earlier instance, he said they should hit the rock and water will come out. At that particular time, God said they should speak to the rock. But when Moses got to the rock, the way he spoke was as if God was not able to bring water just by speaking. That was why God gave him this answer. That because you did not believe me to hallow me. The word is hallow. Let's go back to the Lord's prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, then you know what I'm going to talk about. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. It means that we need to hallow God in every circumstance of our lives. When you bring my message into the prayer, it means that we start the prayer with the glory and we end it with the glory. Hallowed be thy name is in the beginning of the prayer. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. So he, he was teaching us that in every situation, give God the glory from beginning till the end. So Moses began with the glory of God. But when the people demanded water, they were confronted with a tight situation. Moses, God was expecting Moses to demonstrate his glory to the people. That was why in the last episode, I told you that you can give God the glory in two ways. Either you demonstrate it by your own words or you demonstrate it by your words to other people. In this instance, God expected Moses to talk about his glory to Israel. That is the work of the men of God. And in this time of the coronavirus, I am deeply surprised that people who have been preaching from the Bible, preachers who had been saying big things, now that we are confronted with a virus that involves death, you see that they are afraid. I am amazed that people are so much afraid of death. Hey, so you don't believe the Bible. What did God say about death? People are so much afraid of death though. But, but listen, when we come to believe in God, the Bible says that we have passed from death into life. That was what John encouraged the believers with as he wrote his letters to them. That when we come into Jesus, we have passed from death into life. So we are not supposed to be afraid of death. If you are afraid of death, it means you don't read your Bible well and you disagree with the one you say is your Lord. If you really agree with Jesus as your Lord, you know that death has no power over you. But now because there's an issue that involves death, you're afraid. I told you the other time that God didn't send this virus to come after you. It's going after sinners. So if you know you are a Christian, why are you afraid? So the shocking thing is that those who profess to be the servants of God are behaving like Moses. If you are watching me as a preacher and you are afraid and you are even telling your church people that this is not the time to go to church. This is what one man of God said. A very popular person. And I always call that man a motivational speaker and not a pastor. He's going around the world and people who don't know him 
respect him as a man of God. I see him as a motivational speaker. He doesn't represent my God. Because he said, the virus is real. So this is not the time to go to church. He's speaking like Moses. When Moses did that, he attracted the anger of God. Because I told you in the other episode that no one can come in and argue about the glory of God. Because he is the sole owner of everything you see. No one can share in his glory. So if you are preaching about him and there's an issue, God intentionally creates that issue and he will be watching you who says you represent him whether you talk positive about him or negative. That is why I told you the other time that God is a wise God. He's so wise. And I thank him for bringing this coronavirus. Because in this era, I've seen that people are fake. I've seen that they are fake. They are liars. And they are unbelievers. They don't believe in the Bible. Church people, when things normalize, and you have to go to God, never follow any pastor who was silent in this period. Never follow anyone like that. Because if he was truthful, in this time, you will speak about the glory of God. Meaning, you will talk about what God can do. So let me show you why God got angry with Moses again in Numbers chapter 14. I will only read verse 22 and 23. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice. God was saying these people, he was talking about Israel, he said they have seen my glory meaning during their stay in Egypt, they saw the glory of God. I told you in one of my messages that one thing that baffled me in Egypt was that God commanded Moses to speak and God separated light from darkness. Wow! My God is awesome. God did a lot of miracles in the eyes of Israel. They saw it. And the final one that has never happened before is the parting of the Red Sea. The sea opened into two and the Bible says they passed on dry land. They saw all that. That is why God is saying that these people, they have seen my glory and the, sign which, the signs which I did in Egypt and even in the wilderness. They have seen. What, what was the signs that they saw in the wilderness? God provided them with breakfast and supper. He himself, he showed them that whatever you ask me, I can do. They thought they were putting God to test. God, we need food, we need food. So if God couldn't provide them, then they would say, Moses, which God cannot provide for us? Which, is the, which one is this God? We want to go back to Egypt. And God said, I'm going to give you breakfast. So he rained manna for them. They complain about being uh, uh, so much involved with this manna, manna, manna. They are so loath for that. So they said, oh, we are tired of this manna. And God said, okay, I'm going to give you supper. So God rained quills for them. You see, God said, I did all these things. And listen to what he said in verse 23 of Numbers chapter 14. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who reject me see it. I told you that if you don't give God the glory, you attract his anger. You see, because Moses did not give God the glory, he attracted his anger. In fact, had it not been God's mercy, Moses would have gone to hell would have gone to hell. Why? For the simple fact of playing with God's glory. 
That is to inform you that no matter who you are, don't try to tread on the glory of God. Never try to stampede on the glory of God. You cannot do that because he created you. If your mind cannot comprehend it, it doesn't mean he cannot do it. I'm saying that again. If there is an issue that baffles you to the point that your mind cannot comprehend it, it doesn't mean God cannot do it. You see? That's what I'm here to tell you. So, the preachers who have preached and are afraid of the virus to cause your people to be afraid and also to stay at home, God is angry with you. His wrath is coming after you. Because by, by your measures and by your words, you have caused the people to be afraid of the virus and put away the glory of God. You see, what God was trying to tell Moses was that per your actions, you were putting the whole people to be afraid and, uh, 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 and, and not fear me. They will be afraid for their lives and not put their faith in me. So all preachers who are hearing me right now or seeing me right now, because of your actions, that has put the glory of God down. The anger of God is coming after you. And do you know what God is going to do? When God got angry with Moses, he said, those people will not enter into his rest. They will not go into the, the land of Canaan that he had promised them. So Moses too, he cut his life short. He truncated his ministry. So I'm here to tell you that every man of God who has acted contrary to faith at this period, your ministry will be truncated. And before you die, God is going to bring a strange disease that nobody can heal you. God is going to attack some pastors with strange diseases. As a prophet of God, mark this thing somewhere. That I say that God is going to attack some pastors because they downplayed his, his glory. And no one can heal them. Why? You say you don't believe he can heal a virus. Okay. Then disease will come after you and no one can heal you. Yes. You said it yourself. If you said you could heal the virus, then no disease can come near you. So that is what you need to understand. If you say you believe in the glory of God, let people see, no matter the circumstance. So I'm here to tell you, the coronavirus may be killing people in the magnitude of millions, but my God is still able to stop this pandemic. I would never speak and bring my God down. I open my voice wide. I've stretched the banner in full that my God is able to stop this pandemic because it is he who created the virus. That is why action power as the servant of God, I keep telling you that with God all things are possible. I will see you next time. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Pastor Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.